Hello. How are you, Sam? Evening, Bob. Hiya. Good evening. Uh, uh, Was this your son, Andy? No, son in law. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> or or son in law to be, whatever you want to call him. Wow. Be Bex is other half, my daughter's other half. Oh, I see, okay. Um, are you okay to start, Sharon? Uh, I'll in a minute. <laughs> the chap who was living with his daughter as his sin in law, Sharon. Come on. That works. No. Right, I think we're back now. I think there's. We've got tech gremlins. We have tech gremlins. Yeah. Um, we've got tech gremlins. Oh, yeah. For a while, haven't we? So. No, it's done really well last week. Have you broke okay. it again? No. Oh, I think we've got Stephen Horton joining. What if you um? Right. Okay. Oh. What? Did you just did want you... to admit? I think it's Stephen. That's done. Terry, can we do to try and stabilise the mic and video this end? So again, sorry. What? We have just two minutes to try and. What? Yes, of course. Just give me the nod when you're <laughs> when you're ready. And we plugging it in again. Technical. Probably drop my hammer around. Yeah. Well, it's, We're just going to leave it sad, it's, sorry. It's sorted itself out. It's gone back on automatically now. Again. Okay, Let's see if we can. Uh, we've got to off and try it again. Right, let me just unplug this a second. Um, just, while, just whilst um, whilst uh, PC support is uh, is getting going, um, did anybody did anybody see that uh, Hans Falls Council? Um, did you see the Did you see it that Hans? It was so funny, wasn't it? And you just think, oh my god! And apparently the next one was no better. <laughs> they did have an next one on the news, it was, I guess, yeah. one as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It was just, oh dear. And of course that lady, um, Jackie uh, Weaver. Uh, we... Well, she was only in there as an advisor, and she seemed to try and become the matter. You have no authority. Sorry, Andy. What? You have no authority. Yeah, but she's been on the uh, IT, but she's been on the morning um, breakfast, morning programs and everything. She's like a bit of a celebrity now. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah. you, uh, is that you saying OK, Sharon? Yes, please, let's get going. Right. Okay, right. Well, welcome everybody um, to uh, our Planning and Environment meeting, um, 24th of February, um, and... We can pick up straight away. Um, anyone, I think, in the um, building is aware of the um, emergency evacuation uh, procedure. I think we're all being filmed and recorded, aren't we, Fab? Or whoever? Yeah, we are. Yeah, okay. Um, and we remember the first point on the agenda is submissions from the public. Are there any? Seemingly not. No, none. Okay, fine, we'll move on then. So, uh, number two, um, to receive any apologies for absence? Yes, Councillor Ed Rose. Okay, thank you. Um, number three, declarations by members under the Local Government Act 1972. Um, any? No, okay. Uh, announcements by the chair. I don't have any um, announcements to make today. Um, point five: to confirm the minutes of the meeting of the 27th of January 2021 as a correct record. Um, Michael, could I um, ask you to um, sign on my behalf, please? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, once we've confirmed. Of course, so uh, that affects it. 
So do you do it? Oh, well, I get the files copies once. But can you take a vote on that proposed and second them, please, then? Happy to propose. Okay, I'll second. Five, you're staying. Well, I'm staying so that wasn't there. Lovely. Okay. Is that okay for, for Michael to um, kindly do that on my behalf? Okay, lovely. Okay, lovely. Really okay. want to be a lot of my own glasses on Michael Jackson, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Initial every page and sign and date the last page, please. I will make sure to buy you a loaf of bread in gratitude. <laughs> That's because I spent so much of my time loafing about. <laughs> but I've been missing just quite a number of times, haven't we? <laughs> yes. I usually, this is right about the better. I usually go to the small one uh, near me. I haven't been to the big test day since last March, since before lockdown. Yeah. Okay. Nothing could change, <laughs> I go to the more often than not to the little Sainsbury's down the stick, or big Sainsbury's down the stick, yeah, but, and they've actually rearranged everything, so half the things you can't find. Okay, yeah. That's not good, because then otherwise you can just go and go where that's you right. need to go. Thank you. Well, that's what they do, it's they just want to make sure you have to go past everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, so point six, um, to consider any matters arising from the minutes of the meeting on 27th of January, not covered elsewhere on the agenda. 6.1, pinch points on shared Brookway pedestrian cycleway, SGC local transport priority list linked to COVID-19 social distancing. Um, that, so the only thing is that we're still waiting, we're still waiting for the physical site meeting to take place. Um, and then, um, so once the lockdown is eased, I will then get in contact with them again and ask if they can now arrange a meeting. So, yeah. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. Um, 6.2, South Gloucestershire Council tree planting in Bradley Stoke. Um, so they have confirmed that the new line of trees on Brook Way um, up by the uh, Audi roundabout as part of the project being overseen by the biodiversity team. Um, in respect of the ash that was removed from Oak Tree Crescent, they said due to the rapid onset of ash dieback, the main objective of the instance is to remove trees that pose a potential danger to the public. However, an important part of the project is to replace all trees lost to the disease. This will ensure that we don't lose any of the valuable canopy cover across the county. A record is being kept of all ashes removed and where appropriate, these will be replaced in the future if a suitable or an equal quantity of unsuitable and equal quantity of trees will be planted elsewhere in the county. So, yeah. Lovely, thank you for that. Um, item 7, to note the outcome of previous planning applications and other documents pertaining to planning and environment issues. I sent that out to councillors. There was an extra one. So they have, there have been eight decisions, seven of which agreed with our comments he said he didn't have a problem with and South Gloss refused was for Stoke Meadows and the refusal reason was the proposed development by reason of its scale, bulk, form and appearance would appear out of character in both the original property and the locality and therefore fails to achieve the highest possible standard of design, which is contrary to policies CS1, PSP1 and 38. That was the ins installation of the one rear dormer. Yeah, the dormer building. Okay. Usually, I'll get away with that. 
Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, point eight, to prepare, to prepare responses for the proper authorities regarding planning applications relating to Bradley Stoke. Give me one second. Okay. So the first one is P21005003 PDR, which is the demolition of an existing conservatory and the erection story. No, I can't. Rear extension of form additional. Yeah, single story, rear extension to form additional living accommodation at 56 Great Meadow Road, Bradley Stoke. The video cuts out, and microphone still staying live. This microphone is, I think. Yeah, we can still hear you. We'll just see how it cuts out. Okay. Bear with me a minute, please. It's got to give him both that is. Oh. <laughs> okay, so yeah. it is this house down here. So obviously you can see the conservatory <coughs> at the back there. So if I give you the That is what is there at the moment. Um, Why is the roof line so odd? I guess that they're thinking that they've had a, an extension in the past, I would think. They've got a door at the back of them, haven't they? I mean, this, this bit up here, there, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's what's there at the moment. And that is what is proposed. So I, will sh I can show you the block plans as well. Um, Definitely trend if they're swapping conservatories to more permanent extensions. Yeah, crazy, isn't there? Yeah, crazy, isn't there? <clears throat> that's that's what's there at the moment with the existing conservatory. There's not any space really, is it? It's not any extra space. Same footprint, doesn't it? Doesn't it go past the object or anything? Yeah, so, yeah, so. It's exactly the same. It's, it's, there's no difference in the footprint at all, is there? Not at all. Michael's comment about the roof is because they've had the extension, 
and social failure a stepped down route rather than a continuation to make it look like a, a terrace? And these are the people that lecture us on good design. Yeah, exactly, Michael. Um, but I can't see a problem with this. Uh, I would move it. Yes, I'd second that. Okay. Should we vote to say? Detail of what the actual is going on inside that, though. That part. There are, yeah, there are. Um, And that is... Yeah, so there's no change, change of actual use of the room. You can open it in another window. Right. Well, that would be right then, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Is it round or can you go yeah, like No, it's all right. Because it's, it's this is the, um, so there's the, oh, that's what we want to do, the proposed extension. So the, that presumably will become the living room, judging by its size. So that's what's there at the moment, the conservatory, and that's what they want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's not, not, it's not increasing anything, is it at all? So I think we had um, a proposal in a second, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Are we voting? Yeah. Two, four, five, seven. Yeah, I think that's unanimous. Thank you. Yep. Bear with me a minute whilst I just um, come out of here. Yeah. Oh, well, that one's very confused with really the window. <coughs> oh, no. I'll tell you if there's a microphone plugged in for that, so that one and that one on top of that camera. Yeah, I think they're just part of the. the so you can't unplug it, okay? Yeah. Well, you can unplug that one, I think. Right, so. The next one is P22327F, installation of four static bollards and one collapsible bollard at 68A, Ormond's Close. I'm surprised that needs planning permission. No, that's quite, I've never, I've never seen a bollard one for me before. But, so, you know, bollards, isn't it? What is It's where it is, here. Your drop curves are quite planning for because they change the highways, aren't they? Mm. It's not actually a plan, but it's highway So, I can show you where it is on here. Oh, it's not here. Where is it? It's on the top. 
square. It's this here, this property here. Can you see? They must be having parking issues then. I think that there must be. Yeah, you want to see what, what he's blocking off or is his piece oh, of land yes. or anybody else's? So this is actually the parking space here. Yes, yeah, so there's two vehicles so parked in the road outside yeah. that. So, so I wonder what the static bollard, uh, is that going to be next? Where the static bollards are going to be? Anyway, uh, where in relationship to the house and so, I, I yeah road. so there's the road is here and that's where the collapsible bollard is so it's literally going into the parking space and the posts are yeah. between the parking have you got, spaces have you got yes, have, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just, So is, it, is this being used to segregate the parking from another person then? I, I would have to guess, yes. So yeah, so there we are. Parking space, that's, that's well, the it seems to be in the, in the grounds of 70 rather than 68A, doesn't it? Well, I think yeah. 70, this is, I guess this is 70's driveway is on there so the, that's 70 is that one and this driveway here i guess is 68 a's so they just want to make sure that they can use their drive and yeah keep it clear for them so if they've got disagreements with their neighbor then they're just putting in a post to make sure they park on their side yeah we created a civil issue because it would have been a shared drive but obviously they would, you know, define who has what bit, but somebody's obviously, by the sound of it, trying to get an ownership of their bit, put their mark on it, and say, if you try and park on my bit, my bit I'll tell you to get on it. Yeah, because this is the, shows you, um... An outbreak of green squares. Yeah, so it's there, so it is this, which is 68A, Ormond's places, obviously their piece of land. I mean, we're only interested in land use, aren't we, as a planning committee, not uh, anything else? Not civil matters, no. no. This, this actually would create a civil issue, but, you know, I think if you looked at the overall plans when this was first developed, first that button was a shared access. Communal access. I think they're probably just. Well, I'm happy to. Yes. I was just going to say they're probably just fed up of, like Ben said, they're probably just fed up of getting home and finding they can't actually park on their own mm -hmm. bit of the drive. Well, I mean, I don't know if we can get involved in civil things. I mean, you know, we've, like I said, we've just got to decide regarding the planning side of things, haven't we? So. Yeah. So I think we should. I don't see how it objects in three. No problem. You don't see how it objects to this, but you know, that's between them. Yeah, exactly. And it may, it may actually calm things down. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Never mind. Well, no, no, but what I was meaning by that is that, you know, at least they can't park, you know, they can't just straddle the, um, you know, the, the invisible line between the two anymore if they put this up. So, and if he wants a collapsible one as well, then obviously sometimes they must get home and find a car on the drive anyway. So, because otherwise, if it's just simply to segregate the, you know, the portions of the drive, then he wouldn't be bothering with a, with a collapsible one, would he? So, one would assume, yeah. that, um, you know, he keeps yeah. it fine. Oh, hang on, just let me finish what I was saying. Um, one would assume that he comes home and uh, finds, you know, random cars on his portion of the drive. Sorry, who was speaking then? Sorry. Oh, sorry, Tony. Oh. I, I heard the word chair. I didn't know who was speaking. So, sorry, Tony, go ahead. 
do we actually need to make a decision if it's not an actual planning issue? Uh, because if we actually make a decision to say, well, yeah, we think it's open, does that then implicate us if there is a civil action? Why don't we go back to South Gloucestershire and say we have no views? That, that would be the safest uh, way. Yeah. Because I think the applicant, he's obviously putting in for permission here. Now, once we give him that, he can wave that bit of paper at his neighbour or, you know, if it gets into the hands of lawyers, there'll be all sorts of That's exactly my point there. Uh, yeah, I think, <coughs> yeah, I think that's a good point. And also, the thing is, South Gloucestershire are the ultimate approving authority anyway, aren't they? So, you know, if we, if we say, as, as was suggested, you know, we don't have any views either way, Make your own mind up, kind of thing. You could put that, um, which we have done in the past, is that we have no comment to make on this planning application. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's a good, I think that's a very good point. I, I would leave it to the officer to make a delegated decision on this, and then if they get it wrong, then it will come back on South Cross, and we won't be accused of adding, you know, oil to the flames and all that sort of thing. Yeah. I've, I've seen too much of this at planning and, you know, it will end up a civil civil matter of this. Yeah. Quite. So, yeah, okay. yeah. So, do we have a proposal? So, the question is, we have no comments made for yeah. this application. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. I was totally proposed that. I'll second it. Can you take a vote on that, please, councillors? Keith, are you? Yeah, can you can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I, I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm putting my hand up on the emoji thing, and it's not, doesn't seem to be showing, so... Uh, okay. Okay. So I think that's you. Yeah, you us anyway, Keith. Good, okay. Yeah. Well, we see it. Looks like a still from 2001. Yeah. There's no picture of Mark in the way. Over me a minute. So the next one is PT21006070RE works to crown reduce one horn beam tree by five meters, which is covered by SGPPF. To one dated the 19th of the 7th of the 7th, 2021. That's seven cooks close. Is it submitted by side box? Mm. No. How can it be predated? I know, mm. I don't know how that, I, I, I wonder about that. No, it's the person who lives at seven cooks close. Right. And so it's this tree that. Yeah. For it to be crown, crown reduced. That's going to be teeth the bunch. I know, I'm sure it does seem a bit odd. No, probably 2020. So it's this tree up here that you can see. Yeah, I'd move that, Chair. Okay, is there a seconder? I'll well, second it, right. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> you take a vote on that, please, councillors? All those in favour? Right, go for me a minute, hang on. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a big clap, so it's... No, we haven't. Um, against? Abstentions? Yeah, clap for us, hang on. 
Thank you very much. Right, the next one is P210879F, the erection of the two-storey side extension to form additional living accommodation at 19 Crows Grove. This house here with the whatever it is in the garden there. And I can show you the street image. So it's this house here. So it's to build on to the side there. That is what is there at the moment. We also can see the image for like the satellite view. Yeah. To see if others in the road have done something similar. Huh? Which house is it again? This one here with the pink. And that is in the garden. So that one on the side it's done there. Quite an extensive two yeah. story extension. That one isn't on it? there. Yeah. yeah. So are they building over the top of the garage or demolishing the garage and replacing it? Looks like a few others yeah. in the road. The stories are really poor, aren't they? Mm -hmm. What we've seen today. The, the, the yeah, so that's what's here up there at the moment. Yeah. And um, that is what's proposed. Um, Well, um, yeah. oh, something down the back of a fag packet, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what's there at the moment. Garage is detached. It didn't look like that in the photo, did it? Well, it's yeah, it's a sort of um, I don't yeah, know what it would have been called, but yeah, it's here, that bit there. Oh, right. 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 So it's like a sort of a passageway. Passageway, yeah. Not, yeah. No, the roof goes over the top. That wasn't clear from the other drawing. So um, yeah, so that's what's there at the moment, and. Upstairs, that's think. what is proposed so that it won't be they are what, what, cutting the garage what, in half i think have you got an upper floor plan um, yeah well what they're adding on to the garage is the store isn't it yeah yeah the, at the back i just want to see what's on the upper floor uh, 15, and i'll be leaving the entry it looks like it on that way on that plan oh, yeah, yeah, it so. it? Well, that's what's there at the moment you have thought they would have taken the opportunity of building that, you know, incorporating the entry into the plans? Well, they probably want access to the back garden down that route. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. So that's what's 
in this day and age that architects still handwrite all that. What I used to do many years ago. Did you? Oh, no, I didn't. Yeah, when I left school I did architectural technician through a two month trial. A bit so this next one is a reconsultation. So it's P2100043F, which is the erection of a single storey rear and side extension to form additional living accommodation at 49 Rosemary Close. So if you remember, this came to the last meeting and the town council objected to the planning application on grounds that the proposed extension removes the vehicular access to the property's garage and impinges on access to the neighbouring property's garage. Council has asked that sustainable transport need to review the parking provision linked to this application. So we have now had uh, an amended photo sent through from the, uh, the applicant so you can actually see where their parking is. So there are two parking spaces. And then if you can see on there, there's a blue line which shows the access to the garage. They have also submitted an amended plan. So I can show you that as well. So it is. So this is the amended plan, and um, if I show you what has been superseded. So they have taken our comments on board. So this was what councillors had issues with, was the fact that this came right the way came out here and created a very, na very narrow section there. Do you remember from last month? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is what has now been submitted. So they have reduced that slightly to give what's that measurement there? Uh, one point eight meters is the minimum access for a UK car and I think it's two point one, bear with me a minute. Yeah, it's 2.168. And Sustainable Transport have also commented on the application. Where's 
Sustainable transport is happening. I think it would be difficult for us to object. Mm. And the also have actually addressed yeah. concerns. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's Whenever you're ready now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay, yes. Yeah, so, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, number nine, to deal with matters referring to work within the scope of the Planning and Environment Committee, not covered elsewhere. <coughs> 9.1, South Gloucestershire Council, Cribs, Patchway, Metro Bus Extension, Mockety Patch Lane, Stakeholder Liaison and the Week Update. So you have the update the, in your um, agenda pack with the um, proposed from February to April. There was a meeting on Monday. My laptop had huge problems with Teams, and so we went, but I had no sound. I couldn't say anything or be seen. So I don't know whether there's anything that Keith wants to say because he was at the meeting. Um, well, only that uh, there seems to be some disagreement over the levels between where the being dropped and I, I don't know if you recall but there was a proposal there was a pump now the pump is proved to be totally inadequate 
and I think, wait for it, <laughs> big surprise coming up, they've not got to put one pump, they're going to put three, and it may even turn into four pumps yet, uh, because the amount of water is a lot more than what they anticipate. Um, I did point out that I didn't find that surprising, because the brook, whether it be the brook coming down Station Road, whether it be the Bradley Brook and the extension going into the Nature Reserve, uh, the streams coming through from Patchway right through the Old East Works, and uh, for obvious reasons, the attenuation lake at 40 acres um, is a hell of a volume of water. Uh, and as we know, with Wessex Water involvement in the Nature Reserve, uh, there's no surprise that all of this water is extensions of the river through. So, as I said, it's a bit like King Canute here trying to hold back a, a head of a big river with one pump. It was never going to work. And what we're questioning now is the levels of the road. The way that it's been dropped, it's, it appears to be that you're going to have like a roller coaster right there when that road's yeah. done. So God help anybody that, you know, races through there. Uh, the other odd thing is the pedestrian walkway uh, is going to be at the level of the actual highway still. Now, if the pump does fail or it does flood, I wouldn't like to be walking through there as a pedestrian. You'll get absolutely drenched. So they're going to have to relook at a lot of this. And there does seem to be, uh, you know, a resentment to do that because whoever drew up the plans, I think they want to say that they got it right. Well, I think there's overwhelming uh, evidence that people are saying that we think they got it wrong. So rather than wait until it's all done and then find they've got to extend this contract further, then, you know, check it all now, get it right, Make sure they got the right pumps and everything else, and then we can at least move forward with not a scheme that's going to run completely out of the uh, natural bus with the Woodman's Lane and you know the way that everything went over time there, uh, and this one's already gone way over the time. So let's let's make sure they get it right. So that's about it, really. Keith, can I just ask you, what, what, what do they, you know, before they started work on this, what did they use to extract the water? Because the water's not going to change in terms of, you know, how much volume there's going to, you know, that, that they're having to sort of deal with. So what do they do, or what did they do? Well, there's, there's always been water problems on Gypsy Patch. It's always flooded. Um, worse when it rains, obviously, but um, they have done pipe work and, you know, rerouting of pipes. Now, I think that's what they were banking on, that they were going to get the pumping adequate to suit what they've done. But I think there's a real question mark about this, and uh, they're going to have to revisit it all and check it. I suggested that they call in our old officer, Nigel Hell, who is really the expert when it comes to drainage of any description right here. Uh, but he's long retired, um, but with Nigel's assistance, I'm sure he's the man that could point them all in the right direction. His contacts are, you know, quite a lot with uh, the Environment Agency and all the water authorities. And, you know, he knows the stream and the layout around there at the back of his hand, because we've always had flooding issues. And for obvious reasons, people that live in Bush Avenue, particularly, they are weighted on their insurance and everything because of the flood plane. So, you know, if they don't get this right, it's like I said at the meeting, there's still houses now in Norford Avenue that have got sandbags up against their back walls. And they've had those there for nearly 20 years now, but they're that scared that they're going to suffer the same as they had before. And it only wants one brook to, to you know, become choked or dammed, you know, and, the consequences are quite severe. We don't want to see it, do we? No, obviously not, no. Thank you for that, Becky. All right. I wonder that we, yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, 
Point 10, to deal with Knox's relation to health and safety, and there are none. Point 11, to deal with... Can I something on health and safety, Chair? Of course. Um, it is quite broad. I'm a bit worried about all these orange scooters that are around. They, I mean, some of them are nicely parked on proper cycling bays, and that's fine. But all too often, they're just thrown down um, wherever people finish using of them. Um, it's not exactly in our area, but by the Tesco's in Stoke Gifford uh, one day last week, oh, there were okay. five just lying down the, the blocking the pavement totally. And yeah, it seems yeah. to me that these are almost a case of fly tipping. Okay, Ben wants to come in, I think. Uh, I was going to say, it might be useful to you. Just hold on. Sorry. It, Sorry, it, Ben. It, it might be useful to contact company with men, or at least the web authority of men, because if you read their app on how you um, use those scooters, because you're, by, because you're renting them through an app on your phone, you have, you're supposed to have a designated parking area where you can leave those scooters on the app. So if people are leaving them, say like the whole of Bradbury Stoke is a designated parking area on the app, people can leave them wherever they please without any um, repercussion for their action. So if they left them in a non-designated space, they'd be charged for it. So it might be worth speaking to the company or the authorities put them in to basically, if, we, if they're still going to persist being here, that we need to really be rigorous with parking areas and where they're left. Mm -hmm. So the app isn't allowing people to leave them elsewhere. The app should insist, for example, they're left at the bus stops where they seem to be repositioned every night um, if they've been charged. Yeah, I think that's the point. And I think um, Sharon has uh, actually raised an issue anyway, haven't you, with South Gloucestershire, I seem to remember. I have, I've emailed the company that installed them, or the company that makes them, I emailed Weka and I also emailed South Gloss Transport Services um, about the positioning of them initially and also pointing out it would have been nice if as a town council we'd been informed that they were arriving before they just suddenly appeared because we could have helped perhaps with finding good locations for the parking spots and just so that we were aware of it. Mm. Um, I heard back from the company um, and they sort of said, well, yes, yeah, thank you for your comments. Um, so I've gone back to them and said, but well, you haven't actually answered anything I've really said. Um, I got an out, um, a generic response from South Cross Transport Services, which said we will pass to the officer concerned and they will be back in contact with you within five working days. I'll chase that tomorrow because we're now up to eight working days, I think it is. Um, and I didn't hear a thing back from Weka. So. Okay, I think, I think Tony wants to come in, uh, but just before, just be, go on Tony, sorry. Um, Andy wanted to say something. Oh, sorry Andy. And then, and then they have a third. Thanks Tony. Right. Yeah, just to say that I had a communication from a resident last weekend about this, and I got in touch with Weka. Um, they were parked solidly across the pathway coming out of Sherbourne Avenue, so you literally couldn't get up there. I spoke to them, and apparently what they can do is they can geo-lock these scooters so that if they are a nuisance in a certain area, they can lock them so that they will not go to that area. And I drove past Sherbourne Avenue this evening, and there are none there whatsoever, so I found them quite helpful to deal with. They did what they said, they stopped them, and they geo-locked them, so it might be worth any issues. That we raised them directly. I, I, I raised them with Tim as well as the operating company, and uh, they were quite responsive to me. In fact, I think they got on it as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll ch I can chase that one up again then now that we know that they can be more responsive than they were to me. Could you mention, uh, what, Ben's, could you mention what Ben suggested as well? We need to mark, we need to go, we need to say to them. As a town and parish council, we believe if you're going to put these things in our area, this is where we'd like them parked. Because you could, so as much as they geolock them from going to areas out of boundary, they also stop people from ending their rides in areas that you say are, are not are places you don't park them. So you couldn't expect somebody to end a ride on a scooter up the tub and leave the scooter there. You should expect the app to say, well, if you're going to leave it here, we're going to charge you for it because we've got to send yeah. somebody to get it. 
recover it, put it back, and it's a real inconvenience for the community. So we should at least be saying to them, here's a map of Bradley Stoke, here's where we'd like you to dump your scooters at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and if anyone can't do that, then we'd like you to basically geolock it so they're, not, they're unable to leave them there. They can ride them around the town, but they just can't leave them in those areas. Yeah. And if they did that, then people would be fined for it via the app. Yeah. And it soon stop. Okay, Tony, did you want to come in? Yeah, we've been given to understand from the emails floating around, apart from all the abuse which has gone to a lot of social media, that this is actually a trial period. Yeah. But there must be a situation where the company that owns them pick them up on a nightly basis to recharge them. That's the very that, That's what they do. Yeah. So, so although there may be an inconvenience it, in certain areas at some point of time, they should, in the evening, pick them up, replace them, and hopefully park them in a um, in a nice area or you know wherever we should decide, and then um, it works like that. But I, I do agree. Initially. Um, Right up all the way up until then, there was scooters all over the place, and some were on the floor, some were stood up, and then the following day, they were actually all stood up. So it's a very difficult one to police. Maybe we could include, maybe we could, in, in the communication that Sharon is going to, to, um, to make, uh, maybe we could include a question to them about, you know, how do they propose to deal with this issue about exactly like men, like everyone is saying um you know we want a, we want a sensible solution um so that um we're not faced with the problems that we've been discussing hello yes hello yeah um with regards to this so um, i put up on social media uh for photos identification of the roads and times of when these scooters are seen badly parked and blocking footways. Now, you're right, like Sharon has said, she's already highlighted some of this. Um, and, you know, there was to have been a meeting tomorrow with Oscar Werner, who is the representative for Boy. And that meeting now has been cancelled, but rescheduled with an officer of South Goss to chair it. Now, Having read the comments that have been provided by Roy, they're saying that agreement was made with South Gloss on the areas that these scooters were to be left. Now, I don't know that that's right. They, or if it is, then that officer needs to uh, be answerable for why areas have been defined without any consultation with parish and town councils and consultation with the police and everybody else. Because these scooters, they just appear over the weekend in areas, some of them had five, six scooters blocking pathways, well, some of them yeah. two or three, and some of them have already been seen being driven by two youths on one scooter oh, yeah. in a pack of or five, driving down Littlestone Lane in the centre of the road so that nothing could get round them, and then the two on one scooter went round the roundabout at Orpheus Avenue the wrong way. Now, you know, if you look at road traffic offences, for somebody that has a licence, they would be subject to offences. Now, these are kids, by the looks of it. Somebody is over, they're getting round mm. how they're being able to hire these scooters because they're clearly not old enough, some of them, to be on them. Now, having spoken to the police, the police are saying this. They do not have the funds and they are not going to apply for funding to uh, enforce these scooters. Now, that's, I find that quite disturbing. In other words, you want to wait until you have a road traffic accident, and then that case will be looked at with police at the scene or courts involved, insurance companies, etc., etc. 
A road traffic offence is a road traffic offence. Now, these scooters are designed and they're being, in, as part of the pilot scheme, they can only be driven on supposedly shared pedestrian cycleways or on the main road itself. And if you see the speed, which is 15.5 miles an hour, and you see the kids that are on them and how they're driving them, it's debatable whether or not they've even looked at highway code. But the fact is, that all these questions were going to be put tomorrow at the meeting by taxis. Now, the police are also going to attend. Uh, they do have concerns. Well, they have no concern the police with this. If it were a scooter or any form of, you know, two-wheel appliance on the road, then you have indicators. You cannot put indicators on these scooters because you cannot let go to indicate. So they have concerns about that. There's also no horn, no bell. So, quite frankly, you're allowing kids, and I, I don't mean to be unkind to kids in general, because there's kids, youths, and adults on these scriptures. But, you know, at the end of the day, if they're on the highway, then they've got to abide by the rules of the main road. Otherwise, if somebody gets killed, or they injure, or damage somebody's property, they should be held to attack. So, Quite clearly, I don't think there's enough things been answered here. This scheme, and I, I, I'm telling you from what has been said by senior ex-police officers, like we have in, in our ward, Brian Anderson, as a, as a superintendent, he, he said himself, he doesn't feel this has been thought out at all as a scheme. And also, the police in other council, councils are being funded by boy to actually enforce them. There's been no apply, no, no offer to police, or you know, offering police funding to enforce here. This is a pilot scheme, and we've just got to wait and listen to what people say. Yeah, absolutely. So let, let me just, we've got two people with their hands up, but just very quickly, when is the, when's the meeting rescheduled to? It's, it's the same time, 2 o'clock tomorrow, but it's being held with a South Coast officer chairing it and oh. not Officer Werner for Boy. I'm not saying that Boy won't be there, because they probably will be. But what I will say as well, Mike, is people's interpretation of, you know, I wasn't asking for people's photographs. I was asking for locations of where the scooters are and where they have been placed on footways where they are, you know, in effect, causing an obstruction to anybody who gets along those footpaths. Okay. Now, right. on, just, you... on, let me just finish. Well, sorry, um, sorry. The, the response has been, as you would expect, on Facebook and stuff like that, the trolls come out of the woodwork, including a threat on my life. <gasps> you know, I mean, when you read a comment like, grasses end up slashed, well, come on, you know, there's, you know, it doesn't worry me in the least, but it's just the way that people have, you know, you know, interpreted the fact that you're wanting information. And incidentally, I was asked for that information by Steve Reed, our, you know, uh, cabinet member for Highways. And, you know, if you can't ask for the public, who quite freely are putting those pictures all over the web at the moment, and, you know, you get the trolls come out of woodwork with daffy comments like that. I mean, heaven forbid, you know, free speech is gone, I suppose, and we as councillors shouldn't be representing our local interests for our local people. Yeah, oh, well, that's a really, really disappointing to hear. Um, yep. Can I just um, include uh, Tony or Michael, who I can't, I don't know who put the hand up first. <laughs> yeah, we both got our hand up. Tony, go first. Uh, um, this what you were saying there, um, Keith, with reference to the scooters, there are scooters on the market which do have yeah, indicators, yeah. lights, and uh, horns. Yep. And, and, and it's just that the ones that we seem to be supplying here haven't. They're obviously going to be a little bit more expensive, and that's probably why they haven't uh, gone along that route. But we ought to insist that this is what they should have. 
I think this is the anomaly, Tony. You know, they're, they're culprits and all the cycling people, they were selling these back before Christmas. There was nothing said at the time to any of those purchasers that they were going to be illegal and they weren't going to be able to use them. And, you know, I mean, it's only now that South Gloss seems to be favoring a company. Now, I find that a bit, you know, I'm a bit nervous on that because at the end of the day, they're, they're not saying that, you know, we can only have Toyotas on the road. We can't have Fords or anything else, you know. I mean, if they're manufactured for buying and they're sold by respectable companies, and as you say, they've got lights and horns on them, then they do fit the highway code, let's be honest. And, you know, I don't think somebody that's paid out that sort of money is going to be using it, you know, abusively, like some of these are at the moment. And they would be probably locked up in sheds or under lock and key in garages at night. You know, these things are just being left everywhere. And, you know, besides the fact that when they say you can wear a helmet, it's optional. They're not supplying a helmet. Um, but when it comes to cleanliness of these things, you know, people get on and off of them. They're saying that the handbags have copper in them and they don't need to be cleaned. Well, you know, we're supposed to be so okay. Okay, thanks, thanks for that, Keith. Um, I, I don't know if Michael has changed his mind about No, speaking. I just can't be. I'm just saying. Yeah, oh, sorry. Um, and then and we'll, say, we'll, go to Michael, then we'll, go to, we'll go to Michael and then we'll go to Ben. Sorry, Mike. That's all right. Uh, Michael. Um, there's two or three things, I think. Um, one is, my understanding of this is that the UK is the only country in Western Europe that has not actually put legal constraints on the use of these things. And I think perhaps we should make our Member of Parliament aware of our concerns so that he can perhaps raise it in the appropriate place. That's the first point. Yeah. The second point is, I think this is going to be an ongoing problem, and I think it needs to be kept on the agenda. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is, it really is quite a problem. I've seen groups of five or six feral youths riding around in a pack on these yeah. things with absolutely no concern for other road users and it's not going to be long before one of them does something stupid and decides to cross the road in front of a lorry and we're going to have a fatal accident and I for one shan't be crying. <laughs> Thanks, for that. Thanks for that Michael and let's just go to Ben and then we'll do a summary of what we're actually going to propose the actions that we're going to take. So Ben, oh, all I was going to say is, in the space that we've been talking, I've managed to sign up for it, yeah. and at no point have I been asked to provide a driving license, mm -hmm. verify my age, who I even am, other than to provide to them a mobile number that they text me a code to, to log in with, and an email address. So at, the, at no point in their registration process is it verified that I'm Ben Randalls, I am mm -hmm. 28, and I've got a driving license to use those those systems. So it's not surprising as to why people under the age of 18 or 17 without a, a driving license are being able to use those vehicles. Can we, can we summarise now what, we, what plans we're going to uh, agree to take this forward? Because we've got to, I agree with what, um, well, what everybody's saying, you know, but we do need to keep it on the agenda. But we do need to come to an agreement about what we're actually going to suggest um, to take things forward. So, sorry. Oh, who was that? Yeah, sorry, can I just confirm? What Ben said is absolutely right, uh, but it does conflict with what Boy had sent me. And I was asked, I was asked for a copy of that by Steve Horton, which I'd sent him this evening. Um, but it conflicts with everything, like Ben has just said, you know, it doesn't ask for a driving license, and yet okay. they do. Yeah. I think yeah, okay. what, what we need to insist on, from our point of view as council, is A, there should have been consultation on where these scooters are going to sit. There should be proper, if you like, uh, scooter racks provided by the manufacturer, not by us, the council, and they should be kept and taken back to those areas or dropped off in those areas only so yeah. that they are not left across footpaths. 
And when it comes to the shared footpaths, now we have one here, don't forget, right outside the Jubilee Centre. Now, if they left the scooters themselves in the cul-de-sac outside the Jubilee Centre, or they left them down here, my end, on an ordinary pedestrian footpath, then that would be wrong because they're not intended to be used on the footpath, only a shared footpath. And as we know, our, our footpaths are small, they're narrow, and we haven't got that many in Bradley Stove or this area of shared footpaths. So they're predominantly being used on the road. Okay, thank you for that. So what we need to concentrate on what we're actually going to put in this email or letter that Sharon, hopefully Sharon, you're picking these comments up um, about what we're actually going to say in response um, to the city, to the situation. So Sharon, have you been just been able to take the, the details down about the, the, the things people have been suggesting? I have, yes, everything down so I can, yes, most definitely. Well, because I have I have a huge issue with the age of people using them because I observed three younger people yesterday hurtling down Savages Wood Road in the middle of the road, none of whom were over the age of 14, I would hazard a guess, potentially 15. And I did wonder how on earth can they get them, but if you don't have to prove your driving licence, well, that answers that question. Well, exactly. <laughs> and also, the, you know, the fact that the, what Keith has just said about the fact that it conflicts with what, what um, you know, what are we are being told, effectively. So, so okay then. So, um, I'll send you a copy, Sharon, of what they sent me today. And That'd be lovely. Thank you. It's on the web anyway, but... Yeah, you know, I, I really do think it'd be an interesting meeting this tomorrow, but yeah. I really do think that the police have concerns, but I do find it worrying that they are quite clearly saying they are not going to carry out enforcement. Now, the off the herd are saying that they have a three strikes and eggs system, but what good is that if you've got no way of enforcing it? Yeah, absolutely. And I think what we need to include, and you've probably done this already, Sharon, is that, you know, if South Gloucestershire are going to insist that, um, that we keep them, even against the, um, the issues that we're raising, then they actually have to fund the police um, to be able to, um, to, you know, to actually do the policing of who, um, who you know, who uses them and what they do with them. So, or the police precepts will have to go up. Yeah, well, exactly, yeah. So we can't, yeah, they can't have it all ways. So, so okay then, lovely. So I think we've actually done that one um, to death. So uh, <laughs> I was going to say that to death. <laughs> <laughs> all right then, but thank you, Sharon, for uh, for picking all the the, the the points of that's really helpful. So we can move on now to point eleven, uh, which deal with the fin uh, following financial matters. Matters eleven point one to approve bills and direct credits uh, direct credits for payment. I have a question. Um, what was the actual street maintenance for? Was it uh, 1221 pounds? Yeah, the, the ambient um, invoice uh, payments are split over the year. Uh, and we're dealing, dealing, we're dealing with that, aren't we? Um, when, when are we actually starting to um, review the contract with them? We, that was one, we did that a while ago, but their, their payment is split over the whole year. It's not, it's not paid up front, so it's like a, a figure over the year, if you see what I mean. So. Over the, throughout the year, yeah. So their payment for the year is split between 12 monthly payments. But when are we when are we actually going to start saying to them if you know because several people have raised an issue about them not doing what they're being paid to do? Yeah, that's when they start grass cutting again in the spring. So I think their first cut is March, I think, for the year. Yeah. 
So we will be, we have the maps now, we've got them from South Gloss, more detailed maps. So Del and I will definitely be on the case, keeping a close eye on them. And the, the other question is, um, uh, community Youth Festival payment 2021. Bear in mind we didn't have a community festival. We're paying this guy up front. We pay him that split over the months from September through to June for next year's festival. Yeah, yeah so we're paying this year's for festival. up front, which goes against our policy. Well, we're not paying up front for the whole year. That's paid. He well, pays a month. We're still paying for this festival, next year's festival, up front. No, this year's festival, yeah. But he has we didn't he have has, one last year. No, so but this is. For this year's festival, which we haven't had, we're paying part of it now. Yeah, because so he starts payment, work. That's payment up front. Well, no, because he starts work for us in September. And he is in the process of doing all the work for this year's festival. So he, he might be doing planning right for the festival but i don't feel that we should be paying for his work that he's doing in the background because we haven't actually had any goods from it this is the same scenario he goes to bus tomorrow or he passes away we pay for money which we'll never see but this this contract was one that was agreed before the we've changed it in financial regs so Whether it was agreed or not, I'm just pointing out the fact that we are paying for something up front before we've actually received everything. And we shouldn't be doing it as a council. Perhaps there's a halfway house we can look at here. Um, if we are paying money up front, um, in advance, but we should actually ask him to justify it. Well, we do because we had the we had the planning meeting in January, which councillors could come to. If this guy dies tomorrow, we've we've lost that money. Well, we you've, got to, you've got to ask, you know, two two nearly almost two and a half thousand. If that's just a part payment, what are they actually doing for that? Well, his, the, the, his budget is 21,000 and that's split over 10 monthly payments oh, from okay. September through to June. Okay. And, and he is, you know, it's obviously, it's, yeah, I mean, I completely see what Tony says, but yeah. Can we ask him what he's done each month to justify any money going from the tour. Well no, because that like the, the budget which he can work with is the twenty one thousand. Yes. And that so, so some of that is actually on the charts. day. Yeah. So yeah, over the year over so the it's not unreasonable in my mind to say, okay, if this is your February chunk, you have X hundred or X thousand pounds. What have you actually spent it on this month? Yeah. 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 Did you set in the milestone payment? Yes. What have you yes. paid for the milestone? Yes. Yeah. And you get paid for the milestone. Yes. Yeah. So instead of just splitting the Yeah. It's that's your halfway house, isn't it, Michael? Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. You, yeah. You're exactly. accepting there is work that needs to be done in the background to prepare for a festival. Yeah. That is ultimately work that should be paid for. And then at the end of the day there is the, the festival happens. But it's that's gonna that's gonna be well. But we've got no guarantees if the man dies or goes bust tomorrow that you've lost that money. You've paid out money, which is the taxpayer's money, that you'll never see. But we need to have some sort of insurance on it. Perhaps he should come up with an insurance policy. But we will, uh, if we have last mm -hmm. payments, we will know what has been done up to the date mm -hmm. when the money has gone out. Yep. And you've got to, I think you've got to um, step, step away a little bit from it's a person, it's a company you pay. Whether it's a company, whether it's a person, is irrelevant. The point I've made here, which you don't seem to grasp, if the bloke dies or goes bust tomorrow, we've lost that money. Okay, but how, how, how does somebody prepare for an event and throughout the whole year without us? without us having any financial contribution to that activity. 
because it's got paid the previous year, you should use that money to program. But he's not used that money for the previous year. Yeah. And actually, he paid money well, back well, last well, year because we paid there, him and the event yeah. didn't happen. There so are companies out there that would only be too willing to quote for a festival like this and not take a single penny until the actual festival. And I don't see why we shouldn't be doing that. We're okay. risking 20 odd thousand pounds of the council's money, and if they don't actually perform on the day, you've lost that money. You've got no insurance policy to cover it. Perhaps we could examine for next year what other companies might be prepared to come forward and progress in the way. I think that's an excellent idea, Michael. Yeah, should we, should we agree? Should we agree? Is it the Finance Committee that decides? Yeah, it could be, yeah, finance in April could make yeah. a so, so that, yeah, so that's a good idea then. So let's re, you know, let's kind of reconsider when it comes up for renewal, um, whether we want to do the same, well, reconsider the approach and then go out to, you know, go out to other, other companies um, as, as suggested by Tony and Michael. Yeah, is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay, Tony? Yeah, Okay. All right then. And Michael. Marvellous. Fabulous. Okay, is there any other points that anybody wanted to raise on the... Um, yeah. Sorry. No, go on, sorry. Sharon. No, I was going to say what Dale was going to say, that Keith's got his hand up, and I think that might be left over from a while ago. I don't know whether it's still up. Oh, it was. Well, it's taken on board the further comment to do with the festival. Now, with the, in view of what the Horace has now announced, I mean, do we have any idea at all now what we're no, going to do here with regarding the festival, the firework display, all of these events? No, not yet. That will be considered in due course, I think, obviously. It, yeah, um, if the, the steps that have been identified, the festival will be able to go ahead in... June because it fits in with step three which is the 17th of May so I think by the end of March into the beginning of April we will have an idea on whether the step one and um, potentially into step two as well are on track but I think it's too early now to make a decision for this June but that's just my view obviously well, I council think, and I think we're full of enough is June the 21st that's with nothing anywhere, no restrictions, whatever, but it, we fit oh, into yeah. the category of the May 17th, I think it is. Oh, yeah. Step three. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have the outside events for four... Six, six people. No, outside organised events for up to 4,000 or 50% of the site capacity. Okay, well, we're not, we're not going to be able to resolve that query now. Well, no, because that's not part of exactly. our remit, no. Exactly. So, so I propose... Well, no, because the money that we paid out for last year's festival, he reimbursed us. He gave us a breakdown of the work that he had done up until the day it was cancelled. Yes, he did. He, he repaid everything that he needed to repay. No, it wasn't 20000 because we saved 12000 we haven't paid that out for him. Yeah. So yeah. Um okay, all right, and well let's let's just um see what happens with regard to the unfolding um you know arrangements regarding COVID as we as we go forward and then um put in um put in place the suggestion that um, Michael and Tony have made about reviewing next year or the next time that that, that we um, have to review the contract. Okay? Yeah, yes. Okay, thanks. Is there anyone that wanted to raise anything else about the expenditure? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Oh, was that? I'll take that as a no. Okay, and then so the next point and no, the point. Can we have it? We need a proposal and a seconder, please, on the uh, payment schedules. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Can somebody propose it then? Well, 
I'll propose it. Thank you. I'll second. Ms Keith. Thank you. We'll take a vote, please, councillors. One, one, two, three, four, five, six in favour. Against. Thank you. And okay, now the, the next and final point is point 12 to confirm the date and time of the next meeting, which is Wednesday, the 24th of March 2021 at 7 pm. Okay, so um, thank you to everybody for attending and all the contribution and everything else. Um, and uh, Sharon, thanks for doing all the screens and all the rest of it. Um, yeah. And I will click, there's no other, and nobody wants to raise anything else, I will close the meeting. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye.